Look at this, it's a new Chevy Tahoe. It's longer, it's roomier, and its interior won't embarrass you in front of the six or seven or eight other people riding with you. The Tahoe was always priced like a luxury SUV, but it never felt like one. That's because there aren't many full-size SUVs to choose from that seat up to nine people. Chevy has had that market cornered. But for 2021, the Tahoe is dressing up. Big changes, air springs, independent rear suspension, new infotainment, diesel engine. Otherwise, it's the same formula that General Motors has used for decades. It's huge, it's thirsty, it's America. Come with me, we're gonna drive the 2021 Tahoe today. But maybe you wanna watch more reviews of full-size SUVs. Well, bake some cookies, sit down, and subscribe to the Car Guru's YouTube channel, because we got you covered. When I see a Tahoe, the very sight annoys me. The driver is usually hogging the left lane or trying to park and doing a bad job. I can't see around a Tahoe. The Tahoe driver probably can't see me. Like, is your family that large you can't fit in anything else? Apparently about 100,000 people a year answer yes. So what the heck do I know? Lucky me, the new Tahoe is even bigger. It's nearly seven inches longer overall, five more inches to the wheelbase, Overall though, I think it is a nice looking truck, especially from the front. LED headlights are now standard. There's six different grille designs for each trim, and each of them looks a lot better than what you'll find on some of the Silverado pickups. It's also a little more aerodynamic. Chevy added these air curtains, active grille shutters to aid with aerodynamics and efficiency, and these wheels, these are 20s on the Premier, 18s come standard. I love 22s, I always love 22s, and Chevy thinks you will too because they offer nine different sets of them. Some new features back here, restyled LED tail lamps, backup camera with a washer, and on the Premier and High Country trims, quad exhaust tips, looks pretty sporty. But I gotta say, incandescent turn signals, brake lights, and fixed running boards that are not power deployable, I don't know, 71 grand, what do you think? Well, you should go to your Cadillac dealer for those. This tailgate glass still opens separately. It's not something you find on most SUVs anymore, but I think it's because the Secret Service likes to have these open during presidential motorcades. You know what I'm talking about. Here's some new technology on the Tahoe, sliding second row seats. It's a lot better than before. You get three inches more legroom, and that's if you order these captain's chairs or the bench seat. And if you want to fit nine people in total, you gotta order the base LS cloth seats with the front bench. That's something you don't ever see anymore, but it's on the Tahoe. Back here, this is the Premier trim, so I got the heated rear seats. I've got separate climate, panoramic moonroof. That's a brand new feature on the Tahoe. Really welcome, it opens up the whole vehicle. What's really cool though is something I can't show you. It's on the high country model. That's this center console. It electrically powers fore and aft, so these cup holders will actually come closer to me. That's pretty cool. It's not in any other SUV. Here's the biggest deal. There's actually room in the third row, 10 more inches than before. That's because Chevy ripped out the live axle that ran across here. Live axles, well, they take up a lot more space. There's more wheel intrusion. Now with the independent rear suspension, Chevy was able to drop the floor and also just get the cabin a little wider. So I can sit back here as a grown man and actually not complain for more than 10 minutes. That independent rear suspension means 10 more cubic feet behind the third row. If you get the Premier, it's really easy to fold all the seats down from right back here. Total cargo space is up 28 cubic feet. That's 123 in total. All right, I've shown you enough folding and sliding. Let's get on the road. Both V8 engines are carryover. The one I'm driving now is the 5.3 liter, 355 horse, 383 pound-feet of torque. And now it has a 10-speed automatic transmission. Before, that was only on the optional 6.2 liter V8. That's still available on the higher trims. Now that one has 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. But now they're both the same transmission, so it's a lot more gears. Acceleration. It's kind of slow, and so are the gear shifts. This is an old engine. Uh, it's overhead valve, it's not dual overhead cam. Only two valves per cylinder. 10 speeds does a lot for a truck like the Tahoe, because on the highway, 
the engine's turning below 2,000 RPM. That's great. It's smooth, it's quiet, it deactivates half the cylinders when you're just cruising slowly or at moderate speeds. So it saves some decent fuel, but you know, I'm only getting 14 miles to the gallon right now. And that's as good as it's gonna get because it's 30 degrees out. The towing is also really good, 8,400 pounds max. It's slightly down from the previous year Tahoe because of that independent rear suspension, but this is still really high. However, the Ford Expedition beats the Tahoe by a decent margin, and the Infiniti QX80, Nissan Armada, they match it. It's about 8,500 pounds for those vehicles. So high tow rating, but not as high as you might think. This Tahoe has the magnetic ride dampers. These were already available as an option on the previous gen Tahoe. And honestly, I don't think GM gets enough credit for this technology. This has been out since the very early 2000s. It was on the Cadillac XLR, if you remember that car. Really advanced. And that's something that Ferrari has since copied. So GM has that on a lot of its higher end vehicles. And it basically takes a magnetic fluid. There are these charged metal particles that are in there and it can change the viscosity with electric current. and change that within an instant so you have firm you have soft adaptive dampers have since been you know pretty ubiquitous on a lot of vehicles but this type of technology specifically how these dampers work is still really revolutionary and on a big truck like this you notice it the regular coil sprung suspension that's on the standard tahoes those are good but the magnetic ride is really what you want in a vehicle like this even better is pairing that with the air suspension that's available on the high country. That one will let you travel up to four inches, either up or down, and up to 10 inches max ground clearance in fully off-road mode when I'm in four-wheel drive low, at low speed, you can do that. And you can also lower the vehicle like a Range Rover when it's parked so you can easily step inside. That's a nice feature and that's brand new for 2021. One thing I notice about the Tahoe is that it's not a very quiet SUV. It's actually kind of loud in comparison to other vehicles in this same price range. Part of that reason, single pane glass here. It's not double pane. A lot of vehicles now have the double pane because it has an extra layer of insulation between them and it really makes a difference. I just don't feel like there's as much insulation period throughout this vehicle like there could be. I'm not talking like this is like you're at a rock concert or something, it's just, really should be quieter. And I don't have a decibel meter on hand right now, but just by my own ears, this is a louder, louder truck. And that doesn't scream luxury to me. Well, it screams, I don't want it to. New for 2021 is a Duramax diesel. That's a three liter turbo inline six that makes just as much torque as the bigger V8. And in two wheel drive form, it gets up to 28 MPG highway a really big deal on a giant truck like the Tahoe. So whether you're towing or you just drive long distances, which is what most Tahoe owners would do, especially if you're taking big road trips, you really should get the diesel. It's available on every trim except the Z71. Let's be honest, the Tahoe does not maneuver or handle well. You always know it's a big, big, heavy truck. Now the independent rear suspension does help. Not that much, but it does help. It's basically a more controlled ride. When you had that live axle, there's it's just a stiff bar running across. You can think of it like that. So when you go over joints and bumps or anything, the whole vehicle would shake. This one is better controlled because there are separate linkages that let those wheels move independently. That's why they call it an independent rear suspension. Now they never really changed it for years because of cost and because it was really heavy duty and they figured a lot of vehicle owners, like people who buy Tahoes, wanted that. But the game has changed since then and SUVs don't really ride like SUVs anymore. People expect a more car-like ride. So the Tahoe had to change. I think it's for the better, but it really doesn't make a giant night and day difference like you might expect. This is still just, you know, it's a little sloppy in the steering and it's just, you really have to be in full control, paying attention at all times because it's a giant vehicle. This is one vehicle that I really want to have lane departure warning on all the time. And the brakes feel up to the job, and they better be because this is three tons going down the road, and I really want to be able to stop. And thankfully, the pedal feel does feel really good. Basically, the Tahoe feels huge and massive all the time. 
But for driving with lots of people and stuff, I can't think of too many other vehicles this capable at this price. Remember, the Tahoe starts at $49,000. The first thing you'll notice is this. There's no column shifter. Where'd it go? Well, now it's PRNDL right here on the dash as buttons, both push and pull. This is sort of like Lincoln, but less elegant. Lincoln has those really nice piano keys. They look like black keys across the dash here. I think these are a little harder to use, especially in an emergency or if you gotta make a tight three-point turn, but it totally frees up space and it looks a whole lot better than this giant stick here. There's so much storage. Three tiers of trays in each front door. Two pockets on the center console. A huge center cubby. And random little spaces like this rubber tray or this hidden compartment on the dash. The materials are so much better than before. This is the Premier trim and it has perforated leatherette on the dash that wraps nicely around these pretty air vents. It also extends to the console and the doors. The seats have contrast piping and stitching and all the switches look and feel substantial. Other cool features, heated seats with separate controls for the backrest and when you start the Tahoe in the cold, they turn on automatically and cool you automatically in the heat. Even this plastic on the center stack, it's got this really nice soft texture, a nice grain. I mean, why can't every General Motors vehicle look and feel this nice? And why has it taken GM this long to do this? Check out this enormous 15 inch head up display with four separate views, including for the available lane keep assist and adaptive cruise. It's really easy to adjust on the steering wheel. The central display doesn't do much. It really should offer more customization and designs. It is clear though. This 10 inch touchscreen is standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's fast and really easy. You can adjust settings so quickly. There's also a trailer setup app. This is really handy, especially for newbies like myself that don't trailer. It has a whole checklist to tell you how to work it. It'll tell you if someone's trying to steal your trailer and give you maintenance alerts. The rear parking sensors can also compensate for a hitch so you won't ram into someone. That's pretty nice. One other great feature, the digital rear view mirror. Every time I see this thing, it just feels like magic. And it really is helpful when you've got this thing filled with boxes and other things where you can't even see out the window. Push it back, it's like it's not even there. Plus, the 360 degree cameras are very clear. You can see all four wheels, front, back, and the top. And there's lots more physical buttons to control a lot of features, and I'll show you that right now. The Tahoe has four different driving modes, and in sport mode, it does perk up a bit, but not that much. There's an app called Marketplace that stores your credit card so you can make contactless payments. As you know, going somewhere and actually getting out of your car was too difficult, including going through a drive through But this is the future, or so they say, so you can get burgers and pay for gas without doing anything else but running a few taps here on the screen. There's also wireless software updates so it can continually update the apps and the whole system in the background. You never notice that it's happening. What I really like though, whether it works or not, is within the settings, I can adjust the privacy for each app. Let me see if I can find this here. Privacy. I can see location services, data services, whether I'm sharing the voice recognition, and you can actually see what each app is using and how it's using it. A lot of car companies don't do this. And so I actually like the fact that GM actually took the time to show you how the data is being collected. Whether or not it's true that they stop collecting it after you say off, that's another issue, but at least you can adjust it. The 2021 Tahoe starts at $49,000. There are six trims from basic to off-road to luxury, or what Chevy calls luxury. The Tahoe is not really that fancy, and neither are the Nissan Armada, Ford Expedition, or GMC Yukon. The Chevy Suburban and GMC Yukon XL cost a little more and they're longer. This Tahoe Premier is $71,000 as tested, but you can option a high country past $80,000. The Infiniti QX80 is a good choice at that price, but it's also really old, and you can barely get into a BMW X7 or Mercedes-Benz GLS for 80 grand. Range Rover, forget it. So the Tahoe is a luxury SUV. People with other luxury cars own them. They're a status symbol. Big Chevy trucks are everywhere in American suburbs. People just really love them. For my 71 grand, I'd rather go a size smaller and get a Lincoln Aviator or a BMW X5. 
but for the sheer size, I mean, max towing, max people inside, the Tahoe really does deliver, and it's much more of a value than it ever was. Read the full review at cargurus.com, subscribe to the Cargurus YouTube channel, and keep watching. We'll see you next time.